it was black history. And it's a lot of stuff to deal with, so we're going to get right into it. We're going to do the second part tomorrow uh, afternoon. And we're going to start off in Matthew 15, the Bible's Black History Part 1. And we got a lot of stuff to show, not just from the Bible, but, but of course, the main substance is the Bible, because without that, you don't have, you don't have no doctrine to teach if you don't put, bring it out of the Bible. We use other things, historical uh, artifacts and, and literature, just to back the Bible up. But here, this is, this is not per se dealing with it. This is dealing with something Jesus said because the first thing that people need to know is that it's important to the Lord who Israel is anyway. Because I hear a lot of people say right off the bat, oh, he talking about Israel and black and we don't need to know. Jesus wasn't about none of that. He just come to bring salvation. He just come to save. Look, that let me know people really don't know Jesus. If they think Jesus is not concerned with Israel, and when I say Israel, of course, I'm talking about the real Israel because that has been totally misconstrued, and Jesus is going to give us indication of that. So that's what we're going to read first. So we're going to touch on the importance in the beginning to show that we do need to know about Israel being a black people cursed by God. Matthew 15 and 21. Go ahead. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Uh huh. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast uh -huh. and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Mm -hmm. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Okay, so now a non-Israelite woman, they told you she was a woman of Canaan. She wasn't an Israelite. She wasn't from the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but she knew Jesus was, and she even called him the son of David because that's where Jesus had to come as a descendant of King David. She said, have mercy on me. Her daughter had a devil, which wasn't no problem for Jesus. He casting out devils all over the place. But to show you the importance of his chosen people, Israel, no matter what color you think they are, a lot of people think they look kind of like Gentiles or kind of white because that's what we see nowadays but that's not that's not the case but whoever they are they important to Jesus because that's one thing people try to do they try to take Jesus and leave Israel behind like that's unimportant to Jesus you don't know Jesus if you think that notice what Jesus said here he first he didn't say nothing go ahead but he answered her not a word so that, therefore that's what we call you heard of ignoring somebody well that's what Jesus did he ignored the lady on purpose Go ahead. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Now the disciples wanted him to address the lady because she was hounding them. But what did Jesus? Now Jesus is going to say something. But notice what he said that the average person claimed to believe in Jesus never heard of. What? But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now tell your neighbor that. See, people don't know what's important to Jesus. Jesus said, because this woman wasn't Israel, and it wasn't time for him to deal with nobody else. He didn't come to deal with nobody else. Later on, he sent some disciples to other people, but he personally said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So how are you going to listen to somebody tell you Israel don't matter in the Bible or don't matter to Jesus when he made an important statement like this? Even to the point where he didn't, he wasn't going to heal the woman's daughter. He eventually healed the woman's daughter because she showed so much faith in his plan and his order of doing things. She didn't get mad because he said that. She didn't get mad. He even called her dog later on, basically, using an analogy. She didn't get mad. She kept seeking what she was trying to get. So Jesus went on ahead and went out of order for her. But the order is, like Paul said in Romans 2, the Jew first, then the Gentile. That is not chained, and that's what Jesus is stressing here. He said, but I am not sent but unto the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Same thing on your own. You read Matthew 10 when he sent his 12 disciples to go preach, 
He only sent them to Israel. He said, don't go to the Gentile. Don't go to none of the other nations. Don't go to the Samaritan. We're turning over to John 4. We're going to read about another woman, a Samaritan woman. Now, that's real clear. See, and we're here to show that the people, you know, people have said it all the time for a long time, but really hadn't went, went into the Bible and backed it up. That, you know, yeah, the people of the Bible was black, especially Jesus. Oh, yeah, Jesus was black. And that is a fact. Now, I know it is, it, it's, it, it's amazing that you have Gentiles and what we call white people. Some of them get offended and get mad. But, hey, the facts are the facts. See, and, and didn't nobody get mad. Then, then people try to say, well, it don't matter what color he was anyway. What difference do it make? It really don't matter. It, 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 only it mattered because people lied about it. That's why it's important. That's why I got to be stressed and pointed out. Technically, it really don't matter. But if you didn't lie about it, and like I said, it was okay when everything was painted white. Then nobody had no problem with that. Everything painted white. Like I say all the time, my grandmother, she died with a white Jesus in a saucer on her wall. One of those little saucers with a white Jesus. She really believed that. And she wasn't going to let nobody take it down. So she didn't care what color he was. She accepted him being white, even though that's a lie. So what I'm trying to say is nobody white should have a heart attack because you find out that he's black. That's just a fact. Because he anybody can be saved no matter what color you are, but you need to know the truth because the truth has set you free. Now, John 4. So don't have a conniption. Because we saying that he black because we got all the evidence. Unlike the pictures that people painted and the saucers that they made, we got evidence. Not somebody's imagination. John 4 and verse 21. But that show you it's important because Jesus told the lady. He said to the disciples concerning the lady, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of Israel. And now there's another lady here. A Samaritan lady, a non-Israelite or Jew. Jew became short for Israel, so they use that term a lot in the New Testament. John 4 and 21. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Uh -huh. Ye worship, ye know not what. Mm -hmm. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Now again, Jesus talking to another Woman, this time it's a Samaritan woman. The last time I said a woman of Canaan, but she wasn't Israel. He said, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. This woman of Samaritan, they had been planted in the land. She even thought she had some part in it. She trying to tell Jesus a thing or two, and Jesus finally broke it down to her. He said, woman, believe me, the hour will come and you're not going to worship in, in, neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Then he broke it down further, 22. He said, you worship, you know not what. See, this show you, again, the importance of uh, who Israel is or who the real Jews are because Jew just short for Israel. Judah technically is one tribe, but all the Israelites that wasn't in slavery at this time became known as Jews. Even Jesus was called, was called a Jew, but he was rightly so. He was from the tribe of Judah. But he said, you're not going to worship the Father in this mountain. Then he said, ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. See, this is important because somebody actually told me before when I was talking about some of this, well, who the real Jews are and who Israel really is, that they are black people cursed by God, scattered in slavery, and they, and they got offended, kind of said, oh, I don't want to hear about that. All I want to know is about Jesus and how to get salvation. And, of course, I flipped over and read this to her. Okay, you want to know about Jesus and how to get salvation? Well, there's only one way to get it, and Jesus said it here. You see, you got to learn from the right people. That's why it's important to know who the right people are. He said again, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. He didn't even just say he know. We all should know he know, right? Jesus know, right? But he didn't limit it to himself. 
He limited to the whole nation because God gave his word to one people, and that's the people of Israel, and it's proof positive that they are black people. He said, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is. He didn't say Arabia. He didn't say China. He didn't even say Rome where the Pope is at. What did he say? He said salvation is of the Jews. This group of people. So if you want salvation, you better figure something out. Don't think this is unimportant. Now, go to Revelation 2 because we're going to show you right off the bat. He said he was only sent to Israel. Then he said salvation of the Jews. Now people say, well, you know, still that's, that's cool, but you can't tell me those people are not Jews. So they start, you know, you got even a lot of Gentiles because Gentiles and the so-called Jews are not the same. Some brothers got confused on that. But the so-called Jews come from Esau. They come from Esau. They are actually the real Jews. This black people, they actually our twin. But some Gentiles, they, they realize how important Israel or the Jews are, and they start trying to cater to the people that call themselves Jews. But we know they're not real Jews. No, no offense against them. I don't have nothing against them. I'm like the man in the old show. Some of the old people know Dragnet. He's the man who used to say, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. That's all we're concerned with. It don't even matter. It's not even personal at all. That's why we can read it out the Bible. I don't have to make nothing up. So you say, well, no, nah, you know, those are the Jews, and you, you don't have, and Jesus wouldn't do nothing, wouldn't say nothing about like what you're talking about. Notice what Jesus said here, Revelation 2, one verse, verse 9, and you can read the third chapter. He said the same thing. But we're just going to read this for now. Revelation 2 and 9. Go ahead. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Now notice, he's talking directly to his people, his chosen people. And that's this black people that's cursed, that's suffering all over the world, oppressed, been in slavery. Been in slavery so long, you know, and, and, and people don't even want to talk about it. Because people feel guilty, they get offended. Oh, why you want to bring that up? Well, why not? It's a fact. But Jesus is letting you know their predicament. He said, I know your works and tribulation and poverty. See, there's no group of people that have poverty like this people. So he said, I know about it. He's basically telling his people, don't worry, I understand what you're going through. I know your works, your tribulation, and poverty. Then what he said in parentheses? But thou art rich. Now, it's only one way you can be in poverty and rich at the same time. You're talking about two different areas. So physically, you in tribulation and you poor. You're stuck up in all the prisons and all the projects. And... You having a hard time. But spiritually, being that the word of God was only given to Israel or being that Jesus just said salvation is of the Jews. You rich. And ultimately, God going to use this people no matter what. So that's why he said you in poverty, but thou art rich. But now he going to talk about this other people that's over in the promised land to this day. Because the truth, the truth. Jews, we're going to get to it, is in captivity, is in slavery. That's how you can really identify the real Israel. It's a black people, yeah, but it's a black people in slavery all over the world, not just in America, all over the world. You go to the, the Bahamas and all the islands, Jamaica down there, you go to other African countries. See, we think we Africans like the Hamites in Africa. No, two different people. Even you had black Hamites enslave this black people who we know are, are the real Jews. And even among Gentile countries in Europe, Israel is scattered there in slavery. So he said, I know your works, your tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And what else? Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. See, he said, I know about the whole situation. So don't let nobody tell you. Don't talk about who the real Jews are. That's unimportant. 
Only, Jesus don't care about that. He just comes to say, look, why is these words in red coming from Jesus if it don't matter who the real Jews are? You better read the Bible. He said, I know your works, your tribulation, your poverty, but you rich, and I know the blasphemy. He called it blasphemy for a people that's saying they Jews and are not. And that's to this day. And somebody better wake up. He said, but they are the synagogue and say, people say, well, you know, now you're talking about people. Look, deal with Jesus. He's talking about you. But now, we're going to go back all the way from Revelation. We're going to go back all the way to the beginning because now that we know that it's worth looking into who the real Israel is and we showing that it's a black people, this is the only where this black people I'm just using black. We've been called some of everything because that's part of the curse that we're under. We've been called Negro, African-American, color. That's part of the curse. That's in Deuteronomy. We're going to get to that in part two. But right now, we pretty much sticking with black. You throw in African-American every now and then. But we, are, we have accepted being a people called black. Which that's bad. That shows you don't know your history. That's all, that's far as you can go is to a color. Because you can call somebody white, but they know where they, they nationality. They know more than what color they are. They know they nationality. And you can't say African American is a nationality because that is, even when you go back to African, that's a continent, not even a country. But now, Genesis 10. Because the Lord created nations on the earth starting at this time. And that's how the world got divided up in various nations. Starting right here. Before this time, there was no nation. Before the Lord flooded the earth, there was no nations. It was all one people. But here he started it. Genesis 10 and 21. Go ahead. Unto Shem also, the father of the children of Eber, mm -hmm. the brother of Japheth, the elder. Uh -huh. Even to him were children born. The children of Shem. Now, this is after the flood. Go ahead. Elam and Ashur mm -hmm. and Arphaxad and Lud and Aram. Okay. Now, I just read this first because this is the main son that Noah had. This is the main son that he had, Shem. Everything basically ended up flowing through him. What I mean by that, if you trace Shem, you find out that the one who God made the promise that's going to ultimately bless all nations, but it start with one particular nation. That was Abraham. He came from him. He came from Shem. Other people came from Shem, too. Shem had a whole lot of nationalities that came out of him, just like Noah's other two sons. But the main one that came out of him is Abraham, and Abraham gave birth to uh, had Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob. Abraham had another son, Ishmael, at first, too, that's where the Arabs come from. So they come from Shem. The people known as Arabs, they come from Ishmael. And Isaac had two sons, Jacob. He had Esau. That's where the so-called Jew come from. We got a lesson particularly to deal with that. But Jacob came from Shem. He was Abraham's grandson. But now we're going to look at some of the others because what we're going to do, we're going to compare other black people with the people, with the children of Israel, the chosen people of the Bible, and show that they had, they look identical, even though they're not even the same. Mainly the Egyptians, because the Egyptians, you know, you got some people now saying that they they trying to get out of it. They not already too late. They let the cat out the bag. But you got some Gentiles and maybe some Edomites trying to say, well, the Egyptians, they really was white people. The Egyptians was white. Look, it's too late. That 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 boat didn't sail. They let that out the bag. It's too much proof in the Bible and in some of these artifacts that we got. Like you look up here, these are real artifacts that was dug out of a tomb. You, Everybody heard of King Tut, one of the pharaohs? He was black. So there's no way. If you got in, if you look into any of just a little bit of true history, you find out that the Egyptians were black people. The original, the pharaohs were black people. Until the Greeks went through there and, and, and took over everything, they was all black. 
Hamites. And we can read that out the Bible. And we're going to read it. So back up to verse 1. So we're going to show comparison to these Egyptians, these Hamites, and show that Israel looked just like them. That's how you know for sure that Israel is black. But that's not enough. How do you know Israel from other black people? Israel is cursed. They in slavery to this day. Verse 1, 10 and 1. Go ahead. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, uh -huh. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now we already read a little bit about Shem just to show he had sons. He had son named Elam, Ashur, Afra. And th these children had sons, and God stopped produ producing nations from all of them. He started producing nations all the way down to Abraham. He told Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. But Abraham was Semitic. He came out of Shem. But go ahead. And unto them were sons born after the flood. After the flood. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. It's only three. This is where all the nations came from, these three. Go ahead. The sons of Japheth. Uh-huh. Gomer. Now, the sons of Japheth, he had Gomer. Now, these are what we call Gentiles or Europeans and even some Asians. The sons of Japhat, Gomer, who else? And Magog, uh -huh. and Madai, and Javan, uh -huh. and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus. So you got, you got, you know, you got Germans, you got Greeks, you got all these people that came from Shin, that came from Japhat. Whole lot of nations. Russia, all these people came from there. Go ahead. And then even their sons were made, made up of nations. Go ahead. And the sons of Gomer. Ashkenaz, Riphath, and Togarmar. Uh-huh. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarkish, Kittim, and Dodanum. Uh-huh. Now he's going to explain these sons of Japhat. Go ahead. Who, who they make up. Go ahead. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their land. See, these are the real Gentiles. See, in the New Testament, a lot of times Gentile was used generally to cover everybody that wasn't Israel. That's how they kind of use it. But technically, Gentiles just make up one of Noah's sons, Japhat. So you got two more. You got Shem. Israel came from Shem, but it's a whole lot of other nations that came from Shem that are not Israelites. Then you had a whole host of nations that came from Ham. So technically, Gentiles is not everybody other than Israel, even though it was used like that. Technically, Gentiles just come from this one son of Noah, Japhat. Go ahead. Everyone after his tongue, after their families in their nations. Okay, so that's the Gentiles, the sons of Japhat. That's what he said at verse 5 about these. These sons of Japhat were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. Everybody got land. See, that's important to understand because this black people who God said he was going to curse don't have a clue about no land. We don't even have a place. That's a shame you don't have a place to call home. You get on a ship talking about go, going home, you be sailing around the world in a circle until you get some understanding like we know. That ship, for most people, will never dock because they don't know where home is. But everybody, every nation, every people got to come from somewhere. Nobody just fell out the sky. So by these were the of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after the, his tongue, after their families in their nations. Now, verse 6, the, the, the last of Noah's sons. We touched on Shem briefly, not Japhat. Now, the last one is what? Verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Foot, and Canaan. See, and this is the one we're going to focus on more so. The sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Foot, and Canaan. Now, these were dark-skinned races. These are what we call Africans, and some of the Afri so-called African-Americans or black people think that that's where we come from. If they do any seeking, this is where they stop at first. They say, oh, yeah, we come from, you know, some, some brothers even be saying that they from Egypt, they from Kemet, and all this kind of stuff. Timbuktu. But look, you're going to find out it's more black people outside of Ham, and we didn't make it up. He said the sons of Ham, Cush, that's what we know as Ethiopians. You can look that up. The original name was Cush for the Ethiopians, black people. 
Mizraim, actually, that's the original name for the Egyptian. That's one way you know for sure the Egyptians couldn't be white. This is him right here, Mizraim, a son of Ham. All you got to do is look it up or read some more of the Bible. You read Genesis 50 when Jacob got buried in the land of Canaan. Joseph went up there. We're not going to read it. They went up there, and the Canaanites, this other one of the other sons here, black people, which the Lord took the promised land from. They had the promised land, so he took it from those black people and gave it to Israel, some more black people that wasn't even from Ham. So he said, look, they went to Canaan to bury Jacob, and the Canaanites said, this is a great morning of the Egyptians, so they called it Abel Mizraim, morning of the Egyptians. But it was Egyptians and Israelites up there. So that lets you know that Mizraim is truly the original name for the Egyptians. But now, now let's look at some encyclopedia. And the first one we're going to look at is, is the New Compact Bible Dictionary. And I got this from one of the brothers. I, I, I forgot who I got it from, but he fixed it up where it looks a, a, a lot more prominent. That's that one, yeah. On this board up here, if you can see it, that's that one right there. And it's going, this come from a Bible dictionary. We didn't write it. New Compact Bible Dictionary. Under Ham, what does that say? Go ahead. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood. Now, this is what the Bible dictionary says. Ham, and they got how do you pronounce it? Ham, perhaps hot. The youngest son of Noah, born about 96 years before the flood. Go ahead. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. One of eight persons to live through the flood. So unlike the movie Noah, I don't know where they got that from. They had about six or seven. Somebody snuck on the ark. All kind of craziness went on on that. But it was only eight people, Noah, his wife, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their three wives. So he was one of eight. To live through the flood. Go ahead. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. Oh, wait a minute. Now, it said here, Ham became the progenitor of the dark races. Progenitor simply means father. So that's what it says about him. He became the progenitor of the dark races. But then it says something else. What? Not the Negroes. Not the Negroes. Who, who, who wrote this? We didn't write it. Somebody wrote it, and they knew it was a distinct difference between one group of blacks who know. See, that's one of our names. We've been known by Negro. Now, if you call somebody Negro, they might get offended and slap you. Let's show you how our name changed, which that's in Deuteronomy 28. The Lord says he's going to make Israel a proverb and a byword. See, we, that show you that only fits us because we the people who lost and who identity seem to vary and change every few years. You know, we done went from Negro, some point colored was in there. I ain't lying. I seen a man, he had on his birth certificate color. Or his wife had color, and he and his birth certificate said Negro. That means they two different people, technically. A Negro man married a colored woman. Can you believe it? That's what the birth certificate said. But that showed you it had changed, because evidently he was a little older than her. It had changed by that time. And now, I guess they put black on that. Well, I don't know if they ever put African. They put African-American sometimes. But that show you Israel is law. See, and that's the people who he's talking about. So Noah, son Ham, he's the father of the dark races, but not the Negro. Therefore, if the Negro don't come from Ham and he didn't drop out the sky like somebody might have you believe, where did he come from? Like I said, he come from Shem because he is a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you can see that by the curses that God put on him. Go ahead. But he's the, a, read that again. He's a progenitor. 
He became the progenitor of the dark race. Uh huh. Not the Negro. Not the Negro, but who? But the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. His indecent. And, and it quote and it quote Genesis ten when it give you that which we just read. He became the progenitor of the dark race, and not the Negroes, but the Egyptians. How they know that? Because that's Mizraim. So don't let nobody tell you the Egyptians white, because everybody and they auntie know that Ham fathered the dark races. Black people came from Ham. The only thing most people don't know, not all the black people came from Ham. Some came from Shem too. But so if, if he's the father of the Egyptians, that lets you know the Egyptians got to be black. Just like the Ethiopians. Nobody will dispute. Well, I think I heard somebody recently try to say, well, Egypt, Ethiopians was white too in the beginning. Look, they just lying. People the same color they always been too. But the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, Libya, and the Canaanites, which we just read about. Now, let's go back. Let's go to another. See, when you got multiple sources, like the Bible said, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything established. So we got another historical uh, reference, the World Book Encyclopedia, just a common encyclopedia. And instead of Ham, we just going to look up Hamite, the World Book Encyclopedia, Hamite. Read that. See, it was a couple of things. Had Hamilton River, C. Churchill River, but we want to get Hamite. Go ahead. Hamite is a member of a group that entered Africa from Asia long ago. Uh huh. In some areas, the Hamites conquered the Negroes. Wait a minute. The Hamites conquered the Negroes, and you better know it. Because that's who had the so called Negroes now, which is Israel, enslaved in Egypt. Hamites conquered the Negroes then. We just weren't known as Negroes. We was known as who we are, Hebrews or the children of Israel. We were known as who we are. But this clearly two separate encyclopedias that we did not write tell us that this people known as Negroes do not come from Ham. That only leaves one other option that they come from Shem, because you know they didn't come from Japheth, because that's the Gentiles or the Europeans. But they didn't come from Ham like the Egyptians did. But they look the same. They all black. That's why he's that's why they distinguishing this group of blacks from the other. Somebody knew a little history who wrote both of these. The other one was a Bible encyclopedia, dictionary. This is just a regular old world encyclopedia. But it said in some areas the Hamites conquered the Negroes and mixed with them. And that is the truth. Now, we're going to go further. You can read the rest on your own. We're going to go to Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Just to get some more proof. Psalm 105. Psalm 105, and we're going to pick it up at 23. See, when you put Bible and history together, you come up with the same thing concerning this one group of blacks. Like I said, people said for years that Jesus was black. Yeah, but we can prove it. 105 and 23, go ahead. Israel also came into Egypt. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Wait a minute. Now, see, that's how the Lord repeat himself so you get the message both ways. Israel, this is talking about back in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's time, mainly Jacob because that's when they went in. Because Abraham was traveling around, Isaac traveled around, Jacob traveled around until it was a bad famine. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and Israel, he ended up going into Egypt. But another name from Egypt is simply, it's in the land of Ham. It's just like they tell us the Middle East, they done told us this area is called the Middle East. Look, I always ask the question, the Middle East of what? How can, it, it got to be on some continent. What continent is it on? It's on the African continent. Even the promised land, it have to be on the African continent, brothers and sisters. We read 
in Genesis 10 that one of Ham's sons, the father of the dark races, which we saw that in history, was Canaan. And you look at the Bible, God said the promised land was the land of Canaan. So he took it from the Canaanites and gave it to the Israelites. But all of them black. They just all not from the same father because we know that Hamites are different from the Israelites. So it said Israel also came into Egypt and it repeated itself because Jacob and Israel is one and the same. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. We're going to go back and read it in Exodus, but it's telling us that Egypt is the land of Ham. That's all Africa was known as because it was all Hamites that was living there. Go ahead. And he increased his people greatly uh -huh. and made them stronger than their enemies. See, go ahead. He turned their hearts to hate his people uh -huh. to deal subtly with his servants. See, it's just like we read that it said the Hamites conquered the Negroes. Well, here it is right here. He said, turn their heart to hate his people. This is what Pharaoh did. He started hating on Israel and started killing Israel, oppressing Israel greatly to deal subtly with his servant. Then he turned around when God got ready. What God do? 26. He sent Moses, his servant, uh -huh. and Aaron, whom he had chosen. See, God turned around and sent Moses to get him out of that. And what did Moses and Aaron do? Go ahead. They showed his signs among them uh -huh. and wonders in the land of Ham. Oh, so all that stuff, the miracles that Moses did, him and Aaron, it was in Egypt, but the Bible simply called the land of Ham. And we know Ham is the beginning of the dark races, but not the Negroes. So all that stuff was going on. It was going on with all black people. Most people know that. But some people, it didn't get... They didn't got lost from that. But now, go to Exodus 1. Let's go back to when it happened. Exodus 1. Exodus 1. See, we can even read, you can read Genesis. I say maybe Genesis 40, 42 or so. You can read that. Even when Joseph first went into Egypt, his, his brothers, 10 of his brothers sold him into slavery in Egypt. They sold him there, but the Lord had a plan. Joseph ended up in Egypt, 17 years old. Years later, the famine came, and when Jacob and the other 11 brothers came, which we're getting ready to read here, when the brothers came, because Israel didn't come at first, Jacob didn't come at first, when the brothers came to buy some food, in Genesis, it show you that their own brother Joseph, they didn't recognize him. Some years had passed. Joseph was about 30, so maybe 13 or so years had passed. But yet and still, brothers, the only way they could not recognize Joseph is that it was just a whole flock of black people, Egyptians and Joseph, who was an Israelite who came from Jacob. They all was black and they all looked alike because it was a difference in color. Joseph would have stood out to them. Matter of fact, if Joseph looked like the people who say they Jews now, and we know the Egyptians black, then Joseph, they would have paid more attention to Joseph. They would have said, man, that dude looked like us. But Joseph was black, the Egyptians black. They didn't even recognize. I'm talking about they was right in Joseph's face, like me and this brother, close to each other, and they didn't recognize Joseph because they assumed he was just an Egyptian ruler. That's what they assumed. And Joseph played it off on them. Joseph knew their language that they spoke in the land of Canaan. He knew whatever they spoke, Hebrew or whatever. He wouldn't speak that. He act like he didn't know what they were saying and used an interpreter. So that really threw them off. But that's something you can read. Genesis 1. We're not going to read it all. You can have a little homework. Genesis 1 and 1. Go ahead. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Every man in his household came with Jacob. See, now this when it happened. But we, we know it happened. We just read in Psalm that it said Israel came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Well, this is actually when it happened, brothers and sisters. 
These are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. It's talking about the descendants because by this time Jacob had died. But skip to verse 5 and go ahead. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. Uh-huh. For Joseph was in Egypt already. See, Joseph was there because they had sold him there. And that's what, when, what happened, what I just mentioned, how he, they couldn't even distinguish him from the Egyptians because they all looked alike. Now, skip to verse 13 because Psalm 105 said when they came into Egypt, he he made the Egyptians deal subtly with them. And they hated his people. Well, here it go right here. Verse 13. Go ahead. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. See, that's what they did. They put hard bondage on them. Made them serve with rigor, it said. See, this black on black crime right here. People talk about it's a black thing. You don't have a clue. See, we the ones think it's a black thing. or used to say that. It's a black thing. You wouldn't understand. No, you don't understand. Because you see, it's a whole lot. Of, I found that out a long time ago when I got around some true Africans. I thought they would be like, hey, brother. They was like, I don't know you. Excuse me. Bye-bye. <laughs> they didn't even want to talk to me. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. They, they just looked the other way. Like, man, that, ain't, ain't we from Africa? What, what's up with that? What, what's going on? They were like, no, 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 I don't know. <laughs> so I got a rude awakening. I found out it wasn't a black thing because they didn't care to know me. You know, especially I went to college. It wasn't nothing. But mainly Gentiles there, what we call white people. So it wasn't nothing but Gentiles. So all the brothers and sisters who saw each other, hey, you was real friendly because it wasn't nothing but Gentiles there. Whole lot of people. Handful of blacks in a you know, whole lot of Gentiles. So all the, all the blacks was friendly, except when it came to the Hamites, they were still like, mm -mm, no, no, I don't know you. Get away. That befuddled me. But I found out it wasn't a black thing because they know who a nation, they know who they are, whereas I didn't. I thought it was a black thing. Uh -uh. These are all black people, but the Egyptians, some black people, Pharaoh and his people, made the other black people, the Israelites, serve with rigor. Go ahead, 14. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Hard bondage. See, we used, we've been in hard bondage a long time. I guess that's why God made it where we can survive it because we've been in nothing but hard bondage over here. And it seemed like it then got a little better, but really when you just, when you look beneath the surface, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't much better. That's why you always got to cry, talk about well, why your child got killed, why, this, why your child got locked up. Because it's still in another form, it's some hard bondage. Go ahead. In mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. Uh huh. All their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. Uh huh. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, uh huh. And the name of the other, Pua. Uh huh. And he said, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you should kill him. Mm -hmm. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Okay, so even way back here, not only did he make them serve hard bondage, but as if that wasn't enough, he, just, he was just start, started destroying them, started killing them, because he was worried about them outnumbering him. And it's no different even nowadays. See, this was, this was basically a blunt, blatant, form of what we call now birth control. It was just blatant. And you see who it was more so, who it was directed at. I ain't going to say more so. I'm going to say all the way. Who it was directed at, it was even directed at the, the Hebrew or the Israel men, the babies, the boys, because that's who they concerned about. It's just like even nowadays to this day, hey, 
the male among Israel, even though everybody get oppressed, male and female, but the male will get oppressed 10 times more than the female. That's why a female can easily get a job when the male can't. Among Israel, I'm talking about. So every, everybody hurting some, but it was a little, it was some leniency on the female. That's what he said here. When you see, when the Hebrew women have a baby, this is only for them. This was only birth control. Like they got all kind of evidence. They came up with this thing in this country, Planned Parenthood. Everybody, you know, if you look at that, you find out it was mainly directed toward people called Negroes, which we know is Israel. Same thing, because they don't want, just like Pharaoh didn't want, you to grow and populate. See, but they don't, they don't understand it's out of their hands. Because even with Planned Parenthood, yeah, there's been a lot of abortions done among our people, more than other people, a lot of abortions. But even still, Israel still populate. They still can't shut it down. That's why they probably trying to come up with plan B now. Because that ain't, that ain't work like they want to work. It works some because a lot of, a lot of, they made it accessible, still make it accessible for young black women to have birth, con to have abortions. Make it accessible. Even be trying to make it, well, a lot of times, they get young black women, you have a baby or two, even in the hospital, all of a sudden, they, well, you might as well get your tubes tied. Why? Even though I don't understand some of it because, hey, they wasn't married or whatever. Well, hey, ain't no need to do that. Maybe later on you get married and you want to have a baby. But no, they didn't talk you into getting your tubes tied. Or doing C-sections is another way. They start doing C-sections Hey, that's going to limit the birth rate right there. All these things come up with, that's what Pharaoh had right here. He said when you see the Hebrew women getting ready to give birth, if it be a son, at verse 16, then you shall kill him. See, he was blatant with it. He wasn't even trying to hide. Kill him. Just kill the boys. If it's a daughter, let her live because he wasn't worried about the daughters. He said that would just be some more women for the Egyptian men to marry. Because the, the Hebrew women, the Hebrew men was going to be dead. They were dead. They was being killed. See, just like now, it's a lot of, since it's all lot of salt on the male, Israelite males, a lot of Hebrew women, they can't even find one. They can't even find a husband. Because it's still an assault. Just in, in a little different form. But go ahead, what verse you at? Go ahead, read, uh, you finish 16, yeah. skip to verse 22, and go ahead. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, every son that is born, you shall cast into the river. Now, that was every Hebrew son. That's who he was focusing on, because the thing with the midwives didn't work. It didn't work because the midwives wasn't going to do it. They basically, in their mind, they said, skip Pharaoh. We ain't going to do that. They told him some story when he came around, but they was like, skip that. We ain't going to kill the boys. So when Pharaoh came, so what happened? Oh, well, you know, it just happened. They, they fast. They popping them babies out. We couldn't do it. So then he came up with plan B. They always got a plan B. He said, he told, he made all the Egyptian police, basically. He charged all his people, saying every son that is born. He talking about born among Israel, the Hebrews, cast him into the river. Every daughter, you should save a life. So it's the same law, except this time he put it in the people's hand, not the midwives. You see a Hebrew, I give you authority. When them Hebrews have babies, because you know they still going to have them. Because that's one thing, and we ain't going to do nothing else. We going to have some babies still. Can't even, maybe can't even take care of them. That's all right. We going to have them anyway. So he charged his people, every son that they have, that's what we talking about. Cast into the river, and every daughter you save a lot. Two, go right into the second chapter, two and one, because this is set the stage. Like the Lord said, we read in Psalm 105, he said Israel went into Egypt. 
Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Then he, 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 they started hating his people. The Egyptians did. And dealt subtly with Israel. But then he said he, then he, said he sent Moses and Aaron. And they showed his wonders. So here come Moses now. And Aaron was his brother. Go ahead. Two and one. Go ahead. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Uh-huh. And the woman conceived and bare a son. When she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. So now Levi was one of Jacob's sons. So both the male and the female was from Levi, which was, I think, Jacob's third oldest son, second and third son. So they came, and they, the woman got pregnant. Anyway, that show you that we still going to have some babies because they knew if it was a male, he was likely to die. Go ahead. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Okay, so now she hid this child long as she could, three months. Then she figured eventually they're going to find it. And if anybody found a child, any Egyptian found out she had a child, they could check the baby out and say, oh, this is a boy. He got to die. Throw him in the river. So she tried to hide him. She knew something was special about him. The Lord put it in her. And she, long as she, she hid him long as she could. It said like three months. And then when she couldn't hide him no more, she basically made a basket, put him in the basket, and shipped him upstream. She said, I'm going to put him in the Lord's hand. Now, he's not supposed to survive, except the Lord got a plan. So skip to verse 9. Let's see what happened. Verse 10. Verse 10. Go ahead. And the child grew. Because uh, we, we, uh, we skipped where Pharaoh's daughter saw him in the basket. She happened to be out there. It wasn't no happen to the Lord. It was planned by the Lord, but it seemed like to man, she just happened to be out there by the river and seen the child. She knew what was going on. Probably felt a little compassion that her father was killing all them babies. So she knew it was a Hebrew child, and she ended up, taking ownership of the child. She sent him back home and told his mother, didn't, she didn't know for sure that I was a mother, but she told her to nurse the child. And when he got older, you can bring him to me, he gonna be, he's my son. So she was nursing the child for Pharaoh's daughter now, so she had to leave. Wasn't nobody going to touch her now. Wasn't nobody going to touch this child. And this is none other than Moses. So this is how Moses, this is the climate that Moses was born under where they were killing all of the boys in his nation. All of them, throwing them in the river. And he survived. Who, who, who said it that way? Pharaoh said it that way. So he survived through Pharaoh's own daughter. That's how he survived. What happened, verse 10? And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. See, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. But she was, it was like she was nursing him for her already. Pharaoh's daughter couldn't nurse it because she hadn't had no child. So she let her nurse him, Moses' own mother. And then it got to a certain point, she had to let him go, bring him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And notice what she said. And she called his name Moses. And Pharaoh's daughter named Moses. Moses. Why? And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Right, because she found him in that basket and drew him out of the water, and she called his name Moses. So now he became her son, growing up in the household with her. Now, the question is, do you think her father knew that this was a Hebrew? Absolutely not. Even though he might have known it wasn't his daughter hadn't gave birth, he obviously had to think it was Egyptian. You know how you know? Because the man evidently had some issues with Israel where he killing all of the boy babies. He killing all of them. He don't want them to populate. So even if he going to let one slip through the cracks, do you think he going to let them in his own house and he got this kind of hatred for them? You think he's going to let one in his house? Absolutely not. He ain't going to let one in his house. Even if he said, okay, look, I'll let him live. I ain't, 
Look, he wasn't going to come to his house because he hated them. He was killing them all. So in other words, brother and sister, Mo, Pharaoh didn't know that Moses was a Hebrew. And he growing up in his own house. And being that we know the Egyptians look like these people. There's a picture of King Tut on here. Picture other artifacts come from Egyptian tomb. Being that we know the Egyptians look like that, we know that again, one more time, Moses had to be black like the Egyptians. Because Moses is what we would call nowadays a Negro that don't come from the same people that the Egyptians come from Ham, but look the same. Dark just like them. So that's the way it was. Now, further proof. Skip over to verse 15 and go ahead. Now, when Pharaoh heard, heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. See, now, later on, this is years later. He got grown now. But still, when he found out about Moses, because Moses had rose up and killed an Egyptian, because now he going to try to take up for his people Israel when he got grown. He was about 40. And it said... When Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to kill Moses. Now he want to kill Moses. That lets you know if he would have known he was a Hebrew back a long time ago, he would have killed him. Because he wanted to kill him here when the cat got out the bag, when Moses is going to kill an Egyptian. Because the cat was out the bag then. So when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought, he sought to slay Moses. So ain't no way he would have let him grow up in his own house if he knew then. Go ahead. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh uh -huh. and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. See, but Moses fled, and he went to the land of Midian. Go ahead. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, uh -huh. and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Uh -huh. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Uh -huh. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that you are come so soon today? See, because they always had a problem with these shepherds, but they had some help today from Moses. Because Moses, you know, he didn't ran from Pharaoh. So he just, he ran into them. He ain't had nothing else to do, so he gave them a hand. Go ahead. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Now notice, Moses wasn't an Egyptian, brother. So Moses was a Hebrew. He was a Hebrew. He was from Israel. But he had to look like the Egyptians to grow up in Pharaoh's own house when Pharaoh killing the Hebrews. And not only that, to these women, he didn't look like nobody but an Egyptian. So they didn't even distinguish because he was black. He had came from Egypt, so he looked just like the Egyptians, even though technically he was a Hebrew of the tribe of Levi, which became the priest tribe. But they said 19, and they said an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flood. Just like we got these pictures that came out of Egyptian tombs. They come from Ham. They black. So Moses was looking just like. But so you people don't change. People act like, well, color change too. You know, after all these years, they color change. So look, color don't change. People look pretty much the same way. They looked in the beginning when, when God started these nations. Ain't no drastic changes. Let's go to uh, the New Testament. Acts 21. Acts 21. See, and I have to point out, brothers and sisters, that Israel, this Bible, black history, because Israel, the people of the Bible, is a black people, and I mean a black people, period. So I say that because a lot of these brothers, they got this 12 tribe chart and they threw all kind of mixture of people in there. That is a lie. Israel not made up of all these other different nationalities. Now we know people from whatever nationalities can get salvation if they repent and follow the laws and statutes that God gave to Israel. But Israel is, is, is the black people, period. See, it's, it's, it, it shows you is something in the water when the nation of Israel, they make that all, they, they make it all kind of shades of people. You know, even the so-called Jews, even you heard the term, and, and, and they, 
they allow this. Well, you know, you got some black Jews. Even the so-called Jews, they don't have no problem with that because they can't have no problem with it because they know they're not the real Jews. So they don't have no problem. They say, oh, yeah, we got some black ones. Look, if you got some black ones, they either black or white. Pick one. You ain't got no black Jews and no white Jews, brothers and sisters. You, just like you ain't got no black Ethiopians and no white Ethiopians. Just like you, ain't, you don't have no black Irish and some white Irish. It's one or the other. You can't have it both ways. 